ನಮಃಶಿವಾಯ 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 ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಮಹಾದೇವ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಂಡಿ ಪೂರ್ವ ಯೋ ವೈ ವೇದ ಪ್ರಹಿಣೋತಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ತಂ ಹೇವಮಾತ್ಮಬುಿ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುರ್ವೈ ಶರಣಮಹಂ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾದಿಭ್ಯೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯಕರ್ತೃಭ್ಯೋ ವಂಶಿಭ್ಯೋ ಮಹದ್ಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ಗುರುಭ್ಯ ಸರ್ವೋಪ್ಲವರಹಿ ಪ್ರಜಾನ ಘನ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗರ್ಥೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವಾಹಮಸ್ಮಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವಾಹಮಸ್ಮಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾರ್ಥವಿಭಾಸಕಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿನೆ ನಾನಾವಾದೀನ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಸಂಘ ಪವಯೇ ಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರ ವಂದ್ಯಾಯ ಮೋಹಧ್ವಾಂತ ದಿವಾಕರ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಿಭ್ರತೆ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೆ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಸತತ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ಬೋಧಾತ್ಮನೆ ಯಮೀನ ವ್ಯಥಯಂತೆ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವಿಚ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಮಾತ್ರ ಸ್ಪರ್ಶಾಸ್ತು ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಶೀತೋಷ್ಣ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖದ ಆಗಮಾಪಾಯಿನೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ತಾನ್ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಕ್ಷಸ್ವಾರತ ಇತಿ ಕ್ಷಸ್ವಾರತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಎಂಡ್ಯೂರ್ ಓ ಭಾರತ ಓ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಎಂಡ್ಯೂರ್ ದೆಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಎಂಡ್ಯೂರ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ which generates the experiences of sukha and dukha all this must be endured now when when suggesting that it must or when advising that it must be endured we generally understand endurance means that one keeps suffering this is not what is meant over here endure means upekshasva that rise above it rise above it and how how does one rise above it hmm where is it ha huh. what happens ha na mamaite kinchit kara iti vivekena upekshasva that though they, these are experienced yet they do not affect me even 
anywhere just as much as the fire of the dream does not even warm up your pillow it does not affect me at all vivekena upekshasva and the call for the viveka over here is in understanding that all these vikaras belong to the antakarana it belongs to the mind whereas i the self that i am is the witness the illuminator of mind and all its modifications the whatever is now seen and seen in the sense now understood as anatma is fret with constant change constant modifications so also even to perceive something as sukham and something as dukham the same object the same person can be seen as pleasant and unpleasant pleasing and annoying then is this person pleasing or is this person annoying this is not at all the thing <laughs> we are not asking you to decide whether it is pleasing or not pleasing it is bound to please at some times and it is bound to annoy you at other times it will displease you at other times and therefore ha uh, tan upekshasva they belong to the mind it is all anatma and therefore does not affect me it is not in me nor does it bring any change in the self that i am the consciousness that i am iti vivekena upekshasva now over here the whole process to ignore to neglect or even to say that rising above it is the process it is a consequence of viveka it is the consequence of viveka just about a few decades ago here right here in rishikesh i must have told you this incident sometimes in some other context you know we have this another ashram here in rishikesh which is a little further from where i live there used to be this great mahatma and then it was detected that there was some gangrene which had set in his foot so now that foot that had to be amputated and this mahatma allowed the doctors one day to say that it can be amputated the only condition that he had put was that it should be amputated without putting me into anesthesia in full consciousness that it will be amputated it was the doctor said it will be difficult because we will be using the saws and chopping off your foot like we chop or cut a piece of wood and it is very very painful swami ji but this swami said no it should be done just like that otherwise let this body perish and if it has to be abandoned that way let it be abandoned so the doctors and the devotees who loved this mahatma very much then took a decision 
that we will carry on with amputation without giving anesthesia. As the surgical procedure began, he, he was lying down and only chanting the mantras of the Upanishad. Om Ishava Simidam Sarvam one by one, one by one. And after the surgery was over, there was no resistance. There was no UN cry. Even as those saw blades were working on cutting it, amputating that limb, nothing. And when finally it was all cut, stitched, bandaged, then those doctors said, Maharaj, it is all done. He opened his eyes and said, if it is done, now it's finished. This is Upekshasva. I'm giving you an extreme example, but we must also know that Upekshasva over here, it simply means it is a consequence of that Viveka. It is the consequence of the Viveka. Dukkatadatmiena adhyasena atmanam dukkinam majnasi. And even if <laughs> there, are, there is this cognition or sensation of dukkham, do not. Identification with it would make you say that I am Dukhi, but this is not the fact about I. Let this Viveka stay shining even when going through that experience. And you will discover that all these experiences of Sukha and Dukkha soon will lose its grip even on the psychology even on the psychology. And therefore, now furthermore, Bhagavan Shri Krishna says, O Arjuna, in, in verse number 15, Yam hi na vyathayante te Yam hi na vyathayante te Purusham Purushar Shabha Purusham Purushar Shabha Samadukha Sukham Dheeram Samadukha Sukham Dheeram Somrita Tvaya Kalpate Somrita Tvaya Kalpate Hey Arjuna, he who is thus not tortured who, to whom these sukha and dukkha do not affect, which means the one who is not affected by these polarities of pleasure and pain, etc., who is not affected, which means the one who remains, uh, remains the same, remains equanimous, whose fulcrum of, fulcrum of balance is not lost, who remains same during the pleasure and pain, who is discriminative, dhiraha, huh? somritatvaya kalpate, this wise man now becomes capable of reaching the immortality, not gaining the liberation. Amritatvaya Kalpate. Shitoshnadin Sahataha Kim Syat. Now, in the earlier verse, it was told, endure this Sukha and Dukkha. Question comes what would be the consequence even if one endures or overcomes this? identification with pleasure and pain overcomes this 
identification with these polarities, what is the consequence? Sahataha kimsyat, heat and cold, joys and sorrows, success and failure. What would be the what what would happen even if one rises above, endures these polarities? What will happen? Kimsyat. Uh, to this, the answer that Sri Krishna gives is Yamhina Vyathayantepe. He who is thus not tortured, the, he who is not tortured, such a person who is not tortured by these, by these means, by these polarities. Huh? O Purushar Shabha, O best amongst men, this is how Sri Krishna addresses Arjuna over here as O best amongst men. Huh? Best means the prominent amongst men. Purusham Purusharishabha Samadukha Sukham Dhiram. Huh? This person who is dhira, discriminative, with endurance, with fortitude. Huh? Samadukha Sukham, for whom the Sukha and Dukha have now and have have an status of, of, of being equal. Generally for us, Dukkham is something that is Heyam and Sukham is something that Heyam means is, is something that is worthy of uh, giving, giving up and Sukham is something that is worthy of acquiring. Upadeyam. But this Dhira Purusha is someone now who sees the Sukha and Dukkha a success and failure, all of them have an equal meaning because all of them belong to what? The category of Anatma. And therefore, he who has recognized this fact about Atma and Anatma, which means he who has this discrimination and whose discrimination is not, is not dimmed due to the experiences of the world. He is whose Her discrimination is not dimmed. Its intensity is not lowered because of this experiences with this world. Then what happens? Saha Amritatvaya Kalpate. Then he becomes capable of gaining Amritatvam. Amritatvam means that the, the, the liberation Amrita means some, the word, uh, literal meaning of word Amritam is immortality. Amritatva means immortality, which means that which is not corrupted by time, death, fear, anything. And he, he, he becomes capable of that. Who becomes capable of gaining liberation? The one who has discrimination, one who has knowledge. And what is the quality of that knowledge? that this knowledge does not lose its intensity even when facing the world. Okay? When facing the situations outside in the world. Because these situations are situations which, will, which are bound to create Sukha and Dukkha. Sometimes the same person, same object, same things also can create Sukham and Dukham. Okay. And therefore, this is Sukha and Dukha is not a quality that belongs to the, to, to, to the objects outside. But this is a response of the mind. And therefore, where is the Sukha and Dukha? Definitely not. It, it doesn't belong to the objects, but its location is Antakkaranam. Where is it? The same mind sometimes will see the same object as Sukharupa. Sometimes it will, it will see it as Dukkharupa. And therefore, there is nothing trustworthy about it. Therefore, he know, these, know, this, know this for a fact that this mind is the location of Sukha and Dukkha. 
now through this shloka what was conveyed according to shri madhusudana saraswati is that this this particular shloka number 15 the verse had was meant to deliver this discrimination between antakaranam and atma because the nayayikas vaisheshikas etc accord according to the according to them the purushas that the atma is many atma is many and the reason that they have given for its multiplicity is that every atma every person has its own sukha and dukha therefore the presence of sukha and dukha is now able to justify that this atma is many ha huh? there is one atma per per body every body has their own separate atma and what is the teaching over here is not only that this atma is nitya not only this atma is vibhu but this atma is one and that is what i am so this is now this is this is this was the oneness that this atma is one was refused to be accepted because the the reason that they had supplied was because the sukha and dukha is different per atma then we have said the sukha and dukha does not belong to the atma it belongs to the mind it belongs to the antakaranam it belongs to the psychology and therefore these minds are bound to differ everywhere but difference in the mind does not mean that the atma is also different or is multiple is many and therefore by refuting this we have come again to the conclusion that atma is one so there was what was the shloka meant for it was meant for us to understand matra sparshas to kaunte etc is 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 meant to show the discrimination and therefore he who has this discrimination samadukha sukham dhiram ha huh? this dhira this intelligent this wise discriminative person now becomes capable of gaining the liberation okay ha huh. gaining the liberation now few things about well, this particular shloka that we have to see in details yam hina pyathayanti ete 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 which what what all these uh, these do not these do not affect the person he who is not affected by these okay this is the uh, literal translation of this first uh, quarter of the shloka yam hina vyathayanti ete ete yam na vyathayanti which ete these means what these means the sukha dukkhas do not torture him he who is not tortured by these uh, sukha and dukkha so purusham purusharshah are uh, such a person how that word person over here means the one purusha it is a technical word for atma it is what a technical word even the sankhyas and the yogis also have chosen to use the word purusha for atma when they use the word purusha ha huh, they mean atma the word purusha is not male gender or anything a huh, masculine gender or male purusha over here means 
आत्मा ओके पुरुषम एंड हु आर यू अर्जुन यू आर पुरुषार्शा विच मीन्स यू आर प्रोमिनेंट इम्पॉर्टेंट अमंगस्ट पीपल सो योर प्रेजेंस your opinion your actions are important to all the people and therefore you are prominent amongst them purushar shabha so you are prominent among the rishabha means like a bull in the herd of cattle in the herd of uh, the cows the 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 bull the is a tall male a huge hefty male with a big hump on the back and you know big horns and in that herd of all the cows it is not possible that you you cannot notice he, the bull the bull will never go unnoticed over there so he is very important is prominent like that amongst all the people in the society arjuna you are prominent he purushar shabha important ah uh, this is so this is what you are ha uh, samadukha sukham hiram uh, he who has the one who that purusha ha uh, yam now it is talking about yam yam purusham dhiram samadukha sukham ete na vyathayanti saha now he who is equanimous in situations of pleasure and pain he who is discriminative he becomes capable of attaining moksha amritatvaya kalpate so now the question which was asked what would happen even if one endures sukha and dukha now you have understood the meaning of word endurance okay endurance means rising above upekshasva that is the meaning ha huh? kim syat what would happen to a person who now uh, is uh, does not Uh, get affected by this sukha and dukha he is being told that he who is not tortured by them affected by these sukha and dukha na vyathayanti na vyathayanti means na chalayanti he is not shaken na chalayanti he is not shaken hey what is he not shaken from so there is a foundation on which he is standing and that that foundation is nityatma darshanat his understanding about atma as being nitya now we all experience you know, there is no dearth of experience the experience that i am is is there one in a everything that 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 is that is being experienced by you and therefore there is you don't have to say that i am looking forward for experiencing atma a, a, it is present it is prevalent in every experience that you have whether that experience is of sukha or dukha it is irrelevant i am this experience is prevalent everywhere it pervades every experience and therefore though we have the experience that i am but how is this i seen by you and me we see this i as something which is bracketed in frame of time i was born and i will die and therefore bracketed in frame of time bracketed in space i am here and i am not there thus limited by space limited by attributes limited uh, because of sukha and dukha and thus 
limited existence which is misery is now equivalent synonymous to our presence this is how we see atma as as how what is our darshanam of atma anitya darshanam that it, that atma is anitya but now this wise man is able to see very clearly and his clarity about atma is that this atma is nityatma how is it nityatma that atma is nityam ha huh? atma darshanat now he knows that this atma is not bound by the conditions not limited by the conditions of time space objects attributes nothing is able to put a limitation on this i and therefore this i is timeless boundless limitless one has nitya atma darshanat because he is now he has recognized known this fact about the self the experiences of sukha and dukha do not create any dent on him such is that person na chalayanti nitya atma darshanat na chalayanti because of it and also it does not shake him away it does not take him away from this knowledge now we have to understand he, who is the person who is not taken away from the knowledge the one who who endures sukha and dukha now put it in other other way round the other way round is because now he knows that atma is nitya he now endures sukha and dukha okay out of these two meanings which can arise over here which can be concluded over here which one is more appealing to shri krishna is that shri krishna saying he who endures becomes capable of amritatvam okay the one who endures so that is important and what is amritatvam amrita bhavam kalpate samartho bhavati kalpate means becomes capable samartho bhavati ah now more about this particular shloka number 15 sa nitya atma darshana nishtha dvandva sahishnu ho amrita bhavaay mokshaay kalpate so what is your finally that you are saying about this particular shloka what is what is delivered by this verse sa nitya atma dar atma darshana nishtha he who is now well founded nishtha ha huh? well founded well established in nitya atma darshana atma darshana everybody has but though we have atma darshana which is uh, always there but one does not have the atma darshana that this atma is nitya and therefore this is what is said he who has this knowledge that this atma is nitya the and he, the, that knowledge is not malign or it does it is not uh, what do they call um uh, 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 what do they call concentrated and what is the opposite of word concentrated diluted yes it is neither diluted shaken forgotten okay na that atma darshana nishtha and dvandva sahishnu ho he he therefore is what endure 
towards the dvandvas, the, the opposites, amrita bhavaya mokshaya kalpate, becomes capable of attaining moksha. Okay. Now this is, this is, we have seen the meaning of verse number 15. But this verse 15, Shri Krishna's words have, uh, have something uh, even uh, deeper to, to deliver. What is it? Since the mind is the location of pleasure and pain. Okay. What you, now, what was the reason that was given to, to rise above for the wise man to rise above, the, to not to be affected by these pleasure and pain or uh, uh, success and failure, heat and cold, these dvandvas, is because he, even this, uh, they all belong to anatma. As much as all these things belong to anatma, so also the pleasure and pain, sukha and dukkha, also belongs to the mind, which is anātmā. It does not belong to the ātmā. And therefore, what is the location of sukha and dukkha? Anātmā is the location. Since the mind is the location of pleasure and pain, which differs from person to person. Hence, now the Purva Paksha is, you know, summarizing what he has, the Siddhanti has said what the teacher has said, and based on that, now he is going to present another doubt, which then becomes our stepping stone to, to bring more light. Okay. How he summarizes, you see. Since the mind is the location, location of what? Location of pleasure and pain. And we all know that the mind differs from person to person. Don't we say that? Munde, munde, matir binna. Hmm? That's, that's, that's munde, munde, matir binna. The mind is different everywhere. No two people are going to have the same mind. Therefore, even their opinions are also going to be different. Just because we have different opinions does not mean that, that, that you know, uh, the person with a different opinion does not have even a right to live. Somebody is an atheist, somebody is a theist, somebody is going to believe in one kind of political ideology, somebody in another, and the person who is believing in another will, will abandon his earlier ideology and take to another one. What's the big deal about it? After all, these are opinions, and opinions are bound to change. Opinions are bound to change. Why? Because this is what is the nature of an Atma, that it constantly changes. Change, transformation, vikar belongs to an Atma. So, this and the psychology, the mind is different from person to person and therefore sukha and dukkha is not located in the Atma, which, because of which we had said Atma is different. Why had, why had the Purva Paksha? Purva Paksha means the opponent concluded that Atma is many. There are Atmas, many Atmas are there. <coughs> because every Atma has its own set of Sukha and Dukkha. This is what was said. Then he further goes. Who now is taking up to this point? He has done the Anuvada. He has concluded whatever the teacher has, the Siddhanti has said. Based on that, now he is going to raise his objection. Okay, And he says, then even the doership, and experiencerhood or experiencership. The doership and the experiencership is also located in the mind. Is not it? 
the doership and experiential ship is also located in the mind because when the mind is not available like in sushupti the doership and experiential ship is not there now comes the question by that virtue huh by that virtue he is going to say who he the opponent is going to say mind is the conscious principle and not the atma because all this you had done you had said is because you wanted to show that the consciousness is a principle which is different from mind etc okay from the anatma Ma atma is consciousness anatma is something which is inert illumined by the consciousness object of this consciousness ah but now though you have done so much of it but you know what by by saying so much you still have caused your own harm who is saying the opponent because by saying so what have you proved he do you did not want to prove but it has come it has arrived and that is what that mind is being being seen as the conscious principle if this is the case if this is the case then there is no other conscious principle other than the mind which can be said as to be the illuminator of doership etc we are then in that case we are even if we use two words atma and mind both of them the words mean the same object will mean the same object and anything contrary to this if is accepted by you that atma is still different then there will be a problem and the problem is where is the bondage doership experienceership bondage is there in the mind and where is the liberation in atma oh ho oh. who is liberated the atma who had the problem the mind now you the solution becomes important where the problem is and if you cannot provide the solution where the problem is how does how does it become a solution now you know the problem is that there is no money well no money is not a problem because some rich man has got lot of money in his account sir does that become a solution so because these are two different adhikaranas the locations are very different therefore it does not become anything meaningful the bondage is there in the mind and your liberation is there in the atma vyadhikarana will take place ha vayadhikaranya patti hi ha bandha moksha yo ho that the bondage is in one location your solution to it a uh, liberation is in another location and this will be a problem to eradicate this doubt according to madhusudan saraswati now there is this doubt and there this doubt in the sense this objection is there have you understood what the objection is ha ha vayadhikarana vayadhikaranya apatti it is an objection of having two different separate locations appreciate the problem then then you will you will understand what is the solution vayadhikaranya patti he to eradicate this objection is the is the purpose of verse number 15 okay he, this is how madhusudan sir explains the yamhina vyathayanti ete purusham purusharshaka samadukha sukham dhiram somritatvaya 
Kalpate. This particular verse, the shloka, is brought by Sri Krishna as a teacher reading that this can be the this is the objection which has reason in the mind. Okay. So the opponent is not just an opponent, it is an doubt which can arise in anybody's mind. So therefore, now answering this doubt or this objection is verse number 15. Okay. Which the objection? Vayadhi karanyapattihi. Vayadhi karanyapattihi. Hmm. The, the problem of different locations. How we look at this verse? Yam. Yam. It, this is not English yam. The food is yam. Okay. Yam means it is, it is a pronoun. He who. So now he who means it can be anybody. Okay. It can be a man. It can be a woman. It can be rich. It can be poor. It can be somebody who is a human being or somebody who is a celestial being. Irres irrespective of this. He who, whosoever. He who, whosoever. Means Svaprakashatvena Svataha Eva Prasiddham. The one who is evident because of his, his own uh, self -illum illuminous, ill illuminosity. He who is self evident. Svaprakash. Svayam Siddha. Svayam Prakash. I am is known to all, okay? This does not require that, you know, you have to have some agency to prove your existence. So, sva prakashatvena svataha eva prasiddham yam purusham purusham means purushaha purnatvena purishayanatva huh. Why is this atma called as purusha? Why? Why? What are you repeating why to me? Why is this Atma? Why is this now he is, is called, person is called as Purusha? Atma is called as Purusha who is evident. He is because, because of two reasons. Purnatva, the one whom you are calling here as I, who is always evident, is because this is, this is Purnatva. Uh, because the, this one is Purnam, is complete, infinite, boundless, limitless, and therefore, Purnatvena Purushaha or Purnatvat Purushaha. Okay. Purnatvat Purushaha. And then Purishayanatva because he is found lying in this, in this for, uh, uh, fortified city. This body is called as the fortified city. In a city, you can see thousands of people are doing their jobs and surviving. Okay? And each one is busy doing his own thing. The carpenter is making chairs. The farmer is tilling the soil. Huh? Then the banker is working in the bank. Huh? The bureaucrat is working in that some secretariat. And the taxi driver is driving someone to a, a destination. So on and so forth. Everybody is, the mother is taking care of the child. Or whatever, uh, something of the, there are, in, there are thousands of people and each one is busy doing his own job. 
so also in this body too the pranas are doing their own job the eyes are doing their own job the kidneys are doing their own job the liver does its own job the lungs are busy doing their own job the physical organ called as the heart is pumping the blood throbbing and is doing its own job is not it the every cell of the body is doing their own job and everyone is peace this is what is city so this is a city this is a puri and who is this swami who is the master the king for whom all of them are working apparently each one of them are working for themselves but truly speaking all of them are functioning only for this one master who is available upalabdha in this body who i i and therefore the even when the eyes open and illumine colors and forms for whom even when the eyes close and stop uh, illumining colors and forms for whom you know when you see something very beautiful at that very moment your eyes will even close like when you go to a the hindus we go to the temple and then you have walked whatever 5 10 kilometers up to that mountain top only to reach the temple and then you can hardly stand over there even for uh, one and a half uh, or two seconds three seconds and even over there when the, the moment you reach where you have to stand the eyes are closed okay now you did for whom are these eyes even closing or opening you will also see that you know when you are eating something or looking at something that is very beautiful then the moment your eyes have seen then ah it is beautiful the eyes close for whom do these eyes open the eyes close for whom does the heart beat and for whom does the every organ function who is the master of all this is that atma and the one who is available for whom this body functions the the city functions is is purushaha so the two reasons why this atma is called as purusha one is purnatvat purushaha purishayanatva purushaha so he says purushaha purnatvena purishayanam sukh samadukha sukham same sukha dukhe anatma dharma taya bhasya taya cha yasya jyotishaha ha samadukha sukha ha the one who for whom the pleasure and pain are Does have the same status or equal? No, you know there is there is a little um, uh, what do they call a, a little uh, thing to be marked over here when it is said the one for whom sukha and dukha is one or equal. He just do not think. that one has to now develop that balance it is already there just become aware of it because samaduk sukha dukhe anatma dharma taya because in recognizing that this is anatma dharma it is the property of anatma then what will happen both of them sukha and dukha are the property of anatma of the antakaranam okay then as 
by the virtue that they are the property of properties of anatma by that property by that virtue itself they are now they are equal anatma dharmataya samekritva ha they are sama bhasyataya and therefore both of them are illumined as much as this sukham is illumined dukham is also illumined as much as sukham comes and goes dukham also comes and goes and bhasyataya yasya jyotishah ha no, they are bhasya they are something to be they are illumined ha and they will always remain as the objects to whom to this ever shining light jyotishah ha sukha dukha grahanam asheshan takkarana parinamo palakshanartham now by saying sukha and dukha we are taking the entire everything that can be conveyed by uh, antakkaranam okay uh, by, by that as an antakkaranam ha shrut shrutya atmana ha sukha dukha pratishedhat and why are you casting it in the category of anatma by showing it as the qualities or properties of antakkaranam because through not only through our discrimination we are able to see but because shruti also says that is sukha dukha etc belong to anatma belong does not belong to atma it does not belong to atma dhiram ha dhiyam irayati prerayati ti vyutpatya chidabhasa dwara dhi tadatmya adhyasena dhi prerakam dhi sakshinam ityarthah dhiram generally we have used this word dhiram to mean the wise person but madhusudan saraswati says that this word dhiram just does not stop by giving us the meaning a wise person an intelligent discriminative person but it the the, the word can drive us further the word can drive us further it can ex- get exhausted at what point when it has given whatever it has to give completely and what do you, what does this word dhiram finally give it means sakshi the witness the witness of mind okay dhiram <coughs> amritatvaya kalpate is capable of attaining amritatvam moksha liberation okay let us see this how does this word dhiram takes you to the meaning dhi prerakha dhi sakshinam ityartha and we will see this more in our next class and the uh, most important one shloka of bhagavad most in the sense this is what i am saying every shloka is important but a, a shloka that has been awaited is now going to arrive nasato vidyate bhavah nabhavo vidyate satah is is what will is on uh, is verse number 16 okay we will we will try to uh, um, uh, approach this shloka in our next meeting om purnamada purnamidam purna purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shant shant shanti shankaram shankaracharyam केशवं पादरायणं सूत्रभाष्यकृतो वन्दे भगवन्तौ पुनः पुनः 
ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः थैंक यू ऑल